Right now, you're seeing some paintings and graphic design made by various artists, but what I want you to do is try and guess how many were made by people. If you guess zero, then you probably spend a lot of time writing code. These were made by a technique called Style Transfer and Deep Dream. Both are machine learning programs that allow you to generate new images in ways that seem impossible, so not a single one was actually made by a person. Before I go on, I should preface, I am no coder. Not yet, anyway. While I know some Python and can navigate a computer well, I've never coded a large program. As with everything I do, the way I learn is by picking the hardest project in a field that I can and working through it. By the time I'm done, I've learned a tremendous amount about that field. So to help learn code, and because I'm fascinated by them, I'm going to start building some simple neural nets and working towards building a more complex one. For this video, I won't get into the specific math behind these techniques, as I'll save that for a future video where we actually code up variations of this. There's lots going on, so I want to give it the time that it deserves. So instead, in this video, I'll go over the basic flow of information and how these images are generated. To actually make the images, I used an online tool called Deep Dream Generator, which I've linked to in the description. Fair warning though, once you start making images, you might be at it for hours, because it's really fun. Let's start with style transfer. The idea is that you take two images, known as the style and content images respectively, and figure out what makes those images special. Specifically, in the content image, you figure out what details couldn't be removed without changing what the image fundamentally is. Basically, what objects, structures, and features are in the image. From the style layer, you figure out the more abstract features of the image. So, color patterns, brush strokes, tones, that sort of thing. Then, once you know the content and style, you feed that data into a neural net, which is just some fancy math, and it combines the data to produce new images that mix the properties of the two input images. The result of all of this is that you can take the style from an artist that you like, apply it to an image, and make a new masterpiece that the artist never made. This is Spirits by the Lake by Leonid Afromov. Its magnificent splay of colors makes it an instant classic. Now, if we feed that into the style transfer program with some other photos, we can make some new art. Here are some examples of new images styled with Spirits by the Lake. Thanks to Benjamin Lowe's for the suggestion for this painting. This painting is actually great for this, as its blocky, bright colors lends itself really well to this technique. The classic example, and the one used in the original paper, was Starry Night by Van Gogh, and it works really well for giving images a surreal look. However, the results aren't always this good. Sometimes images just don't combine well, or aren't good style images, and mostly just make a mess, so it takes some trial and error to find good combinations. That said, you aren't only limited to painting styles. Any image can be used as the style image, and the results can be fantastic. While this particular program and this version of style transfer is meant to make more abstract photos, some versions are able to transfer detail more subtly. For example, it can be used to make images of springtime look like winter or fall, or vice versa. So I gave it a try with Deep Dream Generator to see how it handled that problem. At first, I started with a picture of fall and tried mixing in images of winter, and it actually did a pretty good job. Then I tried a winter scene and combined it with images of the other seasons, and it worked really, really well. By mixing and matching seasons, it was possible to seemingly blend the weather, and it was fascinating to see what the program thought were the important details of the various seasons. In the winter to spring conversion, it looks like it added flowers and tried adding grass, and all the trees are styled green. Whereas in spring to winter, the grass has become washed out, and you end up with what looks like a great painting of a winter scene. But it always does kind of look painted, never like a real image. So this program isn't perfect, but the results are still very interesting. I was curious how well it was actually able to preserve the content between images, so I converted an image back and forth a few times, first styling it with Spirits by the Lake, and then the original image. After three rounds, most of the original content was still there, which was really impressive, though a little is lost each time. After that, I started to try and find images that are good together, and these are some of my favorites. Now let's look at the other tool, which is Deep Dream. This one is much stranger, as it's basically the result of running a neural net in reverse. Normally, to train a neural net, we give it millions of images of the thing we want it to learn about, and then we tweak the various control knobs of the network until it gradually learns to distinguish features in the images. What Deep Dream does is run everything backwards to see what the neural net thinks things look like. For example, if we give it an image of random noise and the word banana, it would adjust the image until something in the image registers as banana with the network. Rather than specific words, Deep Dream gives you a ton of more abstract options to adjust how the system runs, and you feed it whatever image you want to start with. It's based on a network that's been pre-trained on a variety of data, so there's all sorts of weirdness already built in. 
To get things started, we pick an image and let it process it for a first pass. Immediately, things start getting weird and some faint details appear. But then you get the option to go deeper. This just means running the image through the program again to boost the effect. Here we get a ton of options that can change the pattern and strength that the program applies the effect. Changing the strength changes how much detail is preserved, I find. Things start to get really weird if you just keep going deeper and zoom in, and you can make really cool GIFs. I started with an image of the Orion Nebula and just kept running the same settings 40 times, and by the end, you can't even tell what I started with. Every time you run this on a new image, you'll get a different result, and if you're not happy with the results, there's a revert button that will take your image back to the previous iteration. When we revisit this and build a program like this for ourselves, we'll take a closer look at what the names of the layer options mean, as they refer to the way that the neural net responsible for making these images is built and the mathematical operations that are being applied. But I think for now that's where I'll leave it. There's a lot more to talk about with these programs, but we'll need to dive deeper into the math, and I think the best way for any of that to make sense will be to go through the code and use some really nice graphics, which will take some time to make. If you'd like to learn more about these more deeply right now, I've linked to some great resources and the original paper in the description. If neural nets and AI are something you'd like to see more of, let me know in the comments. I'll be traveling soon, so making videos on this topic is really easy and helpful, as it only requires having my laptop, and I wanted to learn code anyway. If there are other machine learning techniques you'd like me to look at, be sure to let me know in the comments as well. And with that, I'll wrap up this video. If you enjoyed and want to see more, be sure to subscribe, and most importantly, ring that bell to get updates when I post new videos. If you'd like to support the show, be sure to check out my store on Redbubble for some awesome science-themed art, or consider becoming a patron. Speaking of which, as always, a big thank you to my patrons who make these videos possible. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.